Hi, welcome to the channel Witness for Jesus. Um, this is a first for me. I'm doing a video just uh, kind of ad hoc. I don't have any notes. I'm just kind of making a quick recording. Um, a bit strapped for time at the moment, but I wanted to uh, speak about the new governing body member, Kenneth Cook. And I want to just mention something from a scriptural, biblical perspective regarding um, this person being uh, appointed to the governing body. What I want to talk about is the fact that uh, Kenneth Cook is being uh, presented to us as an anointed brother, um, anointed as in spirit begotten, one of the 144,000 according to Jehovah's Witness teachings. Now there's something that you need to think about here. Um, in the 1930s, I think it was, the full number of 144,000 was reached within the organisation and that wasn't even counting all the Christians that have existed over the centuries since the first century. So um, of course I have a video series on this channel um, called Do Only 144,000 Go to Heaven. Um, check that out, it's a three part video series where I talk about this in more detail. Uh, but basically, the organisation even admitted in print that um, because the number had been filled, that was what made them realise that there would be a great crowd. So it's almost like, oh, we've got too many people, we need to think of why. Well, ah, there must be a different group, and that would be the great crowd. Of course, they were ignoring Revelation chapter 19 verse 1, where it says that the great crowd are in heaven. Go and have a look at that to verse Revelation 19.1. Anyway, regardless, um, since that date around 1930s, um, apparently the number was sealed. So, you know, it's a sealed number um, and no more were going to be called into the 144,000. However, we were told that if an anointed person fell away, if they were unfaithful and they lost their anointed status with God, if they'd been unfaithful, that God would then call others to replace them. So there's some serious issues with the numbers here because of course we know that the early Christians numbered into the many thousands, probably tens if not hundreds of thousands, but if we're going to go with the Jehovah's Witness teaching, it's still many, many thousands if not tens of thousands of early Christians. and. Therefore, the uh, witnesses who were called in the very early days of the Bible students, you know, you're looking at uh, the number has been sealed very early in their history. So they're saying to us that people could have fallen away and then they had to re be replaced as anointed. Now, what I'm querying here is how many, how many anointed people are the Watchtower expecting us to think have fallen away? How many are supposed to have gone um, and been replaced? Because now we're seeing people who were born, born in the 1960s. Now we're being told, well, they're anointed. Well, how can they be anointed? The only way they can be anointed is if an anointed person from the previous ceiling has fallen away. So why are we suddenly getting people on the governing body who were in their 50s? Um, this person, Kenneth Cook, apparently started pioneering in the 1980s. So clearly, he's not that old, okay? So my point is that it immediately uh, made me think about this idea of the 144,000. And one thing scripturally that people should really examine is that uh, Jesus speaks of uh, those who become believers and who become his, his followers and he says in a scripture, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head because I've no notes, but I think it may be John 14 um, or John 17, basically that no one, no one will snatch them from my hand. He says, they've been given to me by the Father and no one will snatch them from my hand. And in other places in the New Testament, we're told that we are sealed with a promise um, and that, you know, we're called 
in Colossians chapter 1 were called into his uh, kingdom from the kingdom of darkness and called into his kingdom and we're given a guarantee um, of the promise from God um, that those who are truly born again as Romans chapter 6 outlines Romans 6 goes into the uh, spiritual death and rebirth of a person who's born again those who are um, you know are adopted adopted into God's family and part of the vine you know um, so my point is that I'm not going to say um, that no one falls away um, there are some debates about that amongst Christians about whether a person can fall away once they're born again I don't believe they can because I believe that none will be snatched from Jesus hand um, and the reason I think people fall away is that if they fall away then they were never actually born again in the first place that's my view uh, other Christians would disagree with me because there are scriptures which um, talk about you know enduring in the faith and um, and keeping faithful I believe we keep faithful through the Holy Spirit that's given to us um, but overall regardless of your belief about that how many people are they expecting us to be to believe have fallen away out of the anointed I mean there are so many now in fact what about that what about the fact that now uh, twice the number of people are participating at the memorial uh, as you know only anointed 144,000 uh, are allowed to partake at the memorial of the bread and wine as per Watchtower teachings so why in recent years have we got uh, over 17,000 people participating when um, I'm sure back when um, I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses it was like 8,000 people participating so are we saying that those participating are lying uh, they're not really anointed they're just participating or are we saying that they are anointed that they're genuine and that for some reason all of the previous you know anointed people well not all of them but a significant number of the previous anointed people have fallen away and that these people are now replacing them there's a huge gap in watchtower theology here um, so I think it's important for us to look at the truth and the truth is that Jesus in John chapter 10 where he speaks of the two sheep folds is speaking of the little flock who he himself identifies as the Jews um, when he speaks to Israel um, and the Jews he says have no fear little flock um, and the other sheep who he speaks to is revealed in scripture clearly as being the Gentiles so the little flock of the Jews the other sheep are the Gentiles now in the book of Acts it becomes very clear that when Peter is shown that the Gentiles are going to be welcomed into the fold they are now coming in they're being grafted in um, into God's arrangement and in Ephesians chapter 2 we're told that the two groups are now made one and the fence that divides the two groups is being removed and that is the Jews and the Gentiles clearly in scripture and they make one flock under one shepherd with one hope and that's in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 to 6 which um, I'm paraphrasing because it's from memory but basically uh, it says um, one hope for Christians and if you read Ephesians uh, chapters 2 to 4 you'll see that really clearly so they've, they're really not teaching the correct thing about um, the sheepfold teaching and they're trying to suggest that um, that the uh, anointed and the great crowd is two separate hopes but there's one hope for all Christians and all Christians are under the new covenant so um, eventually just in case anyone's wondering eventually yes we are going to be in the new heaven and the new earth so I'm not suggesting that everyone only ends up in heaven I'm just saying that the new heaven and the new earth is the is the ultimate place of, of our dwelling with God as Revelation chapters 21 and 22 show us um, but really 
I think Watchtower need to provide an explanation as to why they're appointing people who are in their 50s and telling us they're anointed and why the number of anointed party partakers are now increasing. So this is uh, the video that I wanted to just sort of quickly put on and I'd like to encourage you all to just um, have a look at the other videos on this channel and if you haven't already check out that three-part series about the 144,000 that I did it was the first thing I ever did so it's a little bit slow but you know bear with it um, some really interesting points come out in the third part about the new covenant uh, regarding Jesus and the symbols of his body and blood that's really important for Christians to know so God bless and take care